So in this video, I'm going to build on what we did last time, which was decomposing a matrix, say this DF, into these three parts. And, um, and what I want to do is I want to see how we can use the information here to basically save a compressed version of the file. Is there some extra unnecessary information we can throw away and still retain, maybe not exactly the same, but close to this same table as we had originally? And that would be very hard to do with the original table. When I have these three parts, there's going to be a very natural strategy. So let me grab these pieces. Let me paste them here. And uh, as a first step, I think I'm ready to try to put some more reasonable names on, on these, or at least some more intuitive names, right? These are pretty typical. And uh, the first one I'll start with is actually this piece in the middle, S. And S, I'm going to call that the importance matrix. Do that, just like so. I'm going to come back to that one. And then there's some other pieces, right? We have to have some data, and we have to have a key for interpreting that data. And the way I'm going to get my data is just going to be u times s. And then my key is just going to be vh. OK, so let's take a peek at what these uh, both of these things look like. Uh, I'm going to say um, pd.dataframe of data. And maybe I can round that. It's a little easier to look at. And then I'm also going to say pd.dataframe of my key. And what I want you to no notice is that when I'm looking at this first piece here, this is actually kind of similar in shape to, um, to my other data frame. I don't have quite as many columns, right? I guess before we had, um, uh, we had 10 columns, right? All the way through J, right? So I don't have quite as many here. And um, of the columns I have, you see that most of them are zero, right? Most of my interesting stuff is right here, right? I have these values here. And what this is doing, uh, each row up here, it's actually a code to reconstruct my original row. And so what would happen is when I look at my key down here, what this is telling me is that I'm trying to take some sort of combination of these two rows here in order to produce this row right here. And basically what I'm doing is I'm saying I want to have negative 14.7 of this row plus 8.3 times the second row to reproduce the first row of my original data. All right, that's kind of the magic here. Maybe I'm just trying to do that to show you what's going on, right? So in my second one, maybe I'll call this like key df, right? Let's say I try to say, um, what is my first row? That would be key uh, df of the allocation, i location of zero, right? So I'm pulling out that first row and I'm multiplying that by this value right here, negative 14.7. And then I'm adding up the next row, which is the row at index 1. And I'm multiplying that by 8.3. And, and do you see what I have there? I have something that's very close to 0, 1, 2, 3. You know, maybe if I round it, right, I can see exactly what's happening. I round it to two digits. And I can see it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which was how I, uh, which is what I had right here. What, what if I wanted to reproduce this row on the bottom, right? If I wanted to reproduce that using my key, right? So instead of having these 10 columns, right, I'm down to, if I look at that same row down here in my compressed data, I just have these two here, right? This negative 2, 3, 5, and this negative 3, 7, 4, right? And since those are in the 0th and 1th position, again, I'm taking some sort of combination of, of these rows in my key, right? So these are my data rows, and the numbers in my data rows tell me how I should combine the values in my key. All right, so let me see if I can produce that last row. So I think um, I have this piece here, and, uh, and then we have this piece here. And, and the reason I'm just stopping after the two of these is that you can see most of the values are, are zero, right? And that's why I'm not bothering 
uh, kind of adding everything else up in the key, right? Beyond uh, beyond these first two rows in the key, everything else is, is meaningless because, well, it's always multiplied by a zero in this case. So I do that, and now you can see I'm getting the last row of my original of my original data frame, right? I have 70 up through 79, right, right here. So I'm reproducing that. So, so really kind of what I've done so far is I've taken this 10 column data set and I've shrunken it down to the seven column data set that I can use to reconstruct the original data, assuming I have this key here. Now, as I've been saying, you can see that most of the columns here don't really help me much. And most of the rows here don't really help me much. And, and so it turns out I can actually throw those away and, uh, and did something pretty similar. And so, so let's try this. I'm gonna say for my data, um, I only want to have, well, let me think about how I do this. I have like a row slice and a column slice. Um, I, I want all the rows from my data, right? And I want for my columns, I want to have only the first two, right? So I'm gonna call this like my data DF equals that data DF. And, and then for my key, I'm gonna do the same same thing, right? I only really want those first two rows. So let, let me try to doing this. For my row slice, I want the first two rows and then all of the columns, all right? So I have these two pieces. And, um, and what's cool is if I multiply these together, right? If I multiply my data DF by my uh, by my key df, I, I get this matrix here, which is very close to, it's very close to my original data, just like that, right? So I was able to re, uh, kind of throw away a lot of information, right? Here I have 10 columns, 10 columns and eight rows. I'm shrinking it down. So I just have these two columns and, uh, and these two rows, and that's really capturing all the information um, that I need. Right, and, and so how did I decide to go down to two? I guess I kind of looked at it and kind of made a judgment call here, but this actually will bring us back to this thing, right? Remember that we, we got this data that we've been mucking around with, this compressed form of the data by multiplying u by s, and I told you that s, I could think of that as the importance of, uh, of a particular um, uh, row in the key. So if I look at s like this, maybe if I round it, um, you can see that I have these two numbers and then all of these values. And, and what people will actually do is if I divide this by s dot sum, I can think of these things as a percentage. Um, I'll, round, I'll just round it to one. Uh, let me do the two places. Okay, and so what this is saying is that that first entry in my key data frame is really telling me 97% of what I need to know. And then the second one is telling me 3%. And then after that, I don't really get any more information. And, uh, and, and so right now, since I'm capturing both of these, this is what we'd call a lossless compression, right? I made it smaller and, uh, and I didn't lose any information besides some rounding. And uh, that works because there's such a strong pat pattern here, right? I mean, you know, each row, I'm just adding a bunch of tens to the previous row, right? Nine plus 10 is 19, eight plus 10 is 18. Same thing, right? I mean, there's a very strong pattern and that's why I, I can capture it so simply, right? This 3%, you could almost think of that as capturing, well, what is a pattern in, in just one row? So what this is telling me is that if I wanted to, I could really shrink it down. Instead of just having um, two columns in my in my data frame, I could, I could go down to like one if I wanted to. And um, and then if I came down here, notice that, if that uh, I need to kind of uh, shrink them in proportion, right? If I'm chopping off columns from my data, I need to chop off rows from my key, right? So, so now I'm just down to like this one column and this one row. And when I multiply those together, you see it's not quite as good as before, right? I mean, before I think this first row was like one through nine and now it's 4.25 through five. But I still have the rough magnitude, right? I mean, I have these single digits in the first one, and then, you know, roughly around 70s, 80s in that last one, right? But definitely I'm losing some information there. So let me go back to the way it was. And um, like this, I'm kind of capturing all the information. And, and I want to show you how we could actually use this to save data if I wanted to um, store this data frame. And, and to show you how I'm actually saving space, I think it'll be more fun if I make my data frame very large. So I'm actually gonna come back up here and copy all of this. 
and regenerate it. But this time, let's make it much larger. I'm going to say, you know, let's start at 8,000, and then we have 1,000 rows by 8 columns. I'm going to do that. And why is that unhappy? Somehow this is... Uh, But I do my math wrong. Let me just say I want to have as many rows as necessary. Oh, you, you know, my problem was, is I think I before had 10 columns and I'm, sorry, this is the number of rows and this is the number of columns. So if I go up to here, if I'm adding zeros on there, I guess I should have like, you know, 800 columns. Okay, sorry, that's why I wasn't matching. I need these 10 column names and these 10 columns of data. So I do that and I actually have this huge thing now. And I can rerun my um, singular value decomposition, and uh, and I can get all of this, and I can reproduce it just like before. Well, let's try saving this data into a file, uh, both with compression and without compression. So uh, in NumPy, um, I can say uh, NumPy dot dump z. And when I do that, when I say dump z, I can have a file here, and then I can have some arrays like this, and it'll dump it to that file. Um, z is the, if I, if I don't have z, it can only really dump one. If I have z, it can dump multiple arrays. So I'm gonna say something like this. I'm gonna say with open, uh, you know, I'm gonna say this is my original data dot npz is the extension we would use. And I want to write to it as f. I can write, um, I can write my values, right? So maybe I'll, uh, well, here, I may write that to F. I, I could write a few things here. I, I want to write out um, the columns of my data frame. So maybe I say like data frame dot columns and then data frame dot values. And, and just to make NumPy happy, I'm going to have to make this be a list. So let me do this and, and try running this. And, and it complains that uh, NumPy has no uh, attribute Dump Z, maybe it's save Z, sorry. Okay, great. So a different error message, which is good. And this says that, hey, uh, it, it must be a string, not bytes. Why, why is that? Well, I opened it up with W mode, which means F is expecting a string. So I should open up in binary mode because that's what save Z does. So I run that and um, let me actually, I want to see how big that file was. And um, one way I can do that is I can say like ls-la, that's a bash command. And uh, it's kind of strange it actually is working here. Generally, if you want to run a bash command, you should put an exclamation mark in front of it. And I can see, okay, there's my file and there's its size. Actually, I like to do h for human readable. And I can see, okay, I produced this 64 kilobyte file. Um, can I do better using the singular value decomposition? And the answer is yes, we can. So. Here's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to create another file called compressed. And, um, and I'm going to save this again. I, I'm going to save the column names just like before. And, uh, and now I have to save two things, right? I have to save both my data DF and my key DF, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to save both of these, just like so, data DF dot values, and tdf.values, right? So this was like those two columns and this was these two rows. And, uh, and let me try that, that worked fine. L let me run this command again and compare these. And I can see my compressed data is much smaller, right? It's only 14 kilobytes instead of 64 kilobytes. And, and I should be able to read that in and kind of get back, uh, back what I started with. Okay, so the way we read in in, in uh, NumPy is a little bit different. Um, instead of having this open by itself, I'm going to say with NumPy.load, I'm going to say ridge.npz as f, and um, and then f is not really um, a file object. It's really kind of like a, it, it's almost like a dictionary. Right, and I could say something like this. I could say like for key value and d dot items, I could print off, print off that key. It, it basically what it's done. Actually, I, that was my wrong file. I want to uh, reconstruct from the compressed data. I do that, 
And, and I can see it just like invented these names for me for my three arrays, which is not very interesting. But just like a dictionary, um, I can say this. I can say something like d.values. And uh, maybe if I like print that, I'll actually see what's going on there. Um, it's a little hard to see, but these are the, all the values that I have that I've saved earlier. And, um, and so I can actually pull those out. So just like before I had my column names, my, um, my values for the data and my values for the key, and I can pull those back in. I could say, you know, my columns, my data, and my key, just like that. And that should work fine. And now I want to reconstruct it, right? So I can say data times my key, dot product my key. And that looks cool. And I can put that in a data frame. Right, and uh, that looks a little bit better. And then I should do uh, my columns equals whatever was saved in that file. And then I should probably round it down so so it actually makes sense. And uh, and so this is very cool, right? Because I had this huge data frame, like actually way back here, right? That had like 800 rows. And uh, and I've shown you two different ways to save it to a file and then read it back in. One way is that I can just directly dump the values in that data frame to this file right here, and that produces a big file. Alternatively, if I wanted to, I could use a singular value decomposition to break it up into both data and then a key that I can use to interpret that data. And, uh, and then the great thing here, right, is that this importance tells me that most of the information is actually just in one column even. And so I, I can reasonably shrink that down. I can chop off the rightmost rows from my data, and I can chop off the same number of, of rows from the bottom of my key. And if I just save those two things, right? So now instead of just saving my values, I'm saving, well, what was the column names? What are my values? And what is the key for interpreting those? And then produce this smaller file, orig original.numpy. Z. Oh, sorry, not that one. Compress.numpy z. And so, so it's much smaller. And then when I read it back in, I can just, uh, you know, it was a decomposition and I can recompose it in the same way. I can get back that same data uh, from a much smaller file, um, which is great. Um, other things that people will do with this, if I, if I look at my data df here, right, contrast this with my um, original data, right? So I had um, my data frame dot head. There's a lot of redundancy between these different columns. And, and so what people will often do to avoid this overfitting problem is they'll do the singular value decomposition beforehand and they'll just pull out, you know, really all the information is captured in just these two columns here. And, uh, and they'll use that as an input to say their linear regression, right? They are kind of... Um, we really like invented these new variables, right? People might call this a uh, principal component zero and a principal component one, and we might use those for our, our linear regression, right? Because that really captures all the information we had in our big data frame.